next. Two explosive rock legends kiss, fiery stage shows are as much a part of rock as guitars and drums. But Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley also say pyro can be deadly in the wrong hands. Connie Chung Tonight returns in a moment. The Rhode Island nightclub fire became a federal case today. The National Construction Safety Team, a new federal agency, is looking into the blaze that killed 96 people. A grand jury is also investigating. And members of Great White are back in Rhode Island to testify under subpoena about what they know about the fire started by onstage pyrotechnics that killed their guitarist, Ty Longley. The most horrible experience of my life, man. More horrible experience in my life. You know, that's all I can say. There's nothing else I can say. I, I've I had a little time to grieve at home. I don't feel like I've grieved, you know, properly yet because things have been going so fast. But when I get home, I'm going to be praying with my pastor. And the state has imposed a moratorium on pyrotechnics in clubs. Fireworks have been a staple of rock and roll shows since they were first used by theatrical arena acts like KISS whose singer and bassist Gene Simmons made breathing fire a trademark. KISS still uses pyrotechnics today. And Simmons has agreed to join us today along with KISS lead singer Paul Stanley from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you both for being with us. Gene, I know that Great White had toured with KISS. You know these guys. What went through your mind when you saw that video? You know, tragedy is uh, something that just grabs a hold of all of us in the same way. This is uh, one of the most unfortunate things that uh, I I've ever seen. And uh, in tragedy, unfortunately, uh, people will tend to look for, you know, just a, a target to blame. Uh, there are probably a myriad of, of reasons why this tragedy happened, and I, I would imagine the legal system is going to take its time, and they should to find out what went wrong. Any tragedy deserves due diligence and I hope everybody uh, takes care. People want to talk to us a lot about pyrotechnics and stuff because we've been doing it for 30 years safely in the largest arenas in the world. Have you ever had any kind of accident? Have you caught on fire any band member or anyone oh. in the audience? We've really had no problem, so to speak. It's important for people to remember that pyrotechnics, by their very nature, are combustible and uh, volatile. So they should only be in the hands of licensed pyrotechnicians. You know, that being said, if you follow the letter of the law, even more importantly, you must use common sense. And common sense should dictate, even with being within the realm of the law, does what you're doing make sense? Is it prudent? When you have lives at stake, just because something works a hundred times in a club doesn't mean it's going to happen a hundred and one successfully. You know, pyrotechnics have been used in Disneyland, Las Vegas, the Stones have used them, we've used them. It really is not something to be taken lightly. These are dangerous, dangerous chemicals and uh, we urge everybody to leave those to the people who know what they're doing. This is not for the weekend hobbyist. This is professional stuff for professionals. Everybody on our crew, especially our pyro people, are, are licensed. That's number one. Number two is we always make sure that we talk with the fire marshals and the fire department of every local town that we play in. That's very important. They're not adversarial in tone. They're always about making sure that uh, first and foremost the people are safe and of course the band is safe. Paul, when you have uh, performed with the group, uh, have you ever performed in a small club and used pyrotechnics? You know, in the early days, the infancy of pyrotechnics, um, certainly there were times where we did things that thankfully we got away with. But since then, there's been laws and legislation and uh, there were requirements that really helped to ensure the safety of both the band and all the people who come into a club. Weren't there a few times that your hair caught on fire? Well, I have a, uh, a point in the show where I foolishly go up on stage and try to get the, the excitement level to go up a few notches by going out there and spitting fire. Now, this has been done for centuries, and I learned it from a magician, again, a professional. But foolishly, because I also wanted to look grand, I used to spray a lot of hairspray and so to get that big hair look in the early days. And so 
On occasion, my hair would catch fire, but it was my fault. It had nothing to do with the safety precautions we had, but we had a professional staff who would immediately run out on that stage with CO2 and cover me, and it was out in a, a few seconds. Again, even though we put on spectacle and bombast, at the, at the center of it is safety, first and foremost, every time. See, we can afford, Connie, to have a large enough staff where we have people on stage with fire extinguishers. We're well supplied in any any emergency. You know, the problem and the, the, the sadness that comes with a tragedy is we tend to learn more from things that go wrong than the things that go right. And it's unfortunate that so many lives have to be lost to really give people a wake-up call that fireworks must be done under supervision of people who are licensed and qualified. And any time you take them indoors, it's suspect. And if you don't know the materials that a building is made out of, you're really playing Russian roulette. Both of you had mentioned that there will be and was a lot of finger pointing. It was it the band's responsibility? Was it the club owner's responsibility? Um, whose responsibility was it for your band to make sure that everything was safe? Perhaps we can learn from you. We certainly do everything possible to make sure that the people most qualified are in charge. We are not the people who are most qualified, but we certainly have enough money to make sure that we can ensure or as much as possible the safety of people at the show and ourselves. You have a case here where the guitarist in a band couldn't even make it out. It's a horrific, horrific tragedy. Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley, I thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate your thoughts on this. And still ahead, televangelist Pat Robertson. How